Hi everybody and welcome back to the Tinkerverse. So today we're going to dive into Lightburn and explore the basic layer modes um, that control how your laser cuts and engraves graphics. So we're going to take a look at the different modes. We're going to touch on the layer palette and how to move things around in different layers. And then we will actually cut this pumpkin job a few different ways so that I can show you uh, the different behaviors of the different modes. So in Lightburn, you'll find four distinct layer modes, and each mode dictates how your laser interacts with materials. So at the bottom of the workspace, you've got this color palette, and the color palette is representative of different layers. So if I select an item on the screen, if I select a shape, and I click on one of the colors from this color palette, you'll see that it introduces a new layer uh, up in the cuts and layers window. And if I select other objects or even select multiple objects and select that layer, it will continue to build on that layer. Or if I select a different color altogether, it will introduce a completely new layer. So now what layers are going to give you in Lightburn is layers are going to give you the ability to perform different operations on different parts of your drawing. So first up, let's take a look at line mode. So what line mode does is it traces it as if I were tracing over this with a pen. So if we look at our preview, our preview is pretty much what you see on the screen. All it's doing is it's going to run the laser around the perimeter of all of the shapes and essentially give me a traced outline. What line mode is actually good for is it's good for your scoring and it's good for your cutting. Um, they're all the same operation and will only depend on the speed and power settings. So other software from other manufacturers might say line engrave or might say score. Um, and then they might have a separate operation for cut. All of those are simply handled by the line mode. So now to cut versus a score depends on what speed and power. If I were just to score this and I didn't want to cut this through, I would choose a higher speed and a lower power. So in this case, uh, on a vector, I would choose something like 150 millimeters per second at, uh, let's say, 70% power or 60% power. When I run that, it is essentially going to give me just a score on my finished workpiece. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So as you saw there, the line mode simply did a trace of the whole thing so that it looks just like it does on screen and it looks just like it does in the preview. So now what I want to do is I actually want to cut this out. So I'm going to take this outer line here and I'm going to move it to a new layer. So by selecting the outer uh, shape and I'm going to move it to layer one and I'm going to change layer one back to a line. So this is going to become a cut layer for me. So a cut layer with this material, I want it to be eight millimeters a second at 90% power. Okay, so now what I've got here is it's gonna trace that outline and it's actually gonna cut that out. Uh, and you can actually come in here and if I just wanna run that, I can turn off the output on layer zero, zero here and it will only run the cut. If I leave that output as on, it would actually rerun the whole job. So I'm just using this to demonstrate how the same line mode can both cut and score. So let's go ahead and we'll run this one. Okay, so that covers line mode. Next up, we're gonna look at fill mode. So fill mode is going to fill in 
between uh, the boundaries of your lines here. So it's coloring inside the lines or picture like your inkjet printer filling in, uh, you know, a, a section here. So I'm going to grab the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and I'm going to move them to a third layer. And that third layer for me by default is set to fill. So it might look like this, um, but I'm going to change it to fill. I notice that it renders as filled on the screen. By default, it's likely going to look like this for you. Um, out of the box, Lightburn doesn't typically render uh, filled shapes on the screen due to performance. So if you're on a slower machine and you're working with a really big file, the more rendering of fill that you're going to get on the screen, the slower it's going to perform. So by default, it might look like this. But you can go up to Window and you can say Filled Course in this case. And it will uh, show a representation of the fill on the screen. Um, on a file as small as this, then we're perfectly fine. So as you notice, fill, what it does is it scans back and forth and lasers in between the lines. And each of these, each of these lines here is called a scan line. And the scan line is controlled by your line interval. So when you're dealing with fills, you're dealing with a combination of several things. You're doing your speed and your power, which just like line mode, the faster you go or the lower power you go, the lighter your engraving will be. Whereas if you go slower or more power, you're going to get a darker engraving. But now we're going to introduce line interval to the mix. So if I bump my line interval up, and I'm going to do this a little bit high so that it's obvious, um, when I zoom in, you can see my scan lines are much further apart. And what this is going to do is it's going to result in a lighter engraving um, or potentially even if they're far enough apart that your beam does not overlap the previous line, then you're going to start to see lines show up where you have unengraved material between each of these scan lines if you go too high. So uh, to bump that back down, if I were to go the other way with it, um, and I will go to, let's say, 0 0.5. Now they're going to move even closer together. So it's going to actually result in a much darker engraving because I potentially even have my uh, spot size on my beam overlapping by a considerable amount with the one before it. So it's going to end up being, you know, it's, it's like as if I were going higher power but it's going to be darker because these scan lines are closer together. But notice that it also adds a considerable amount to the time. So total time 214 here, um, whereas if I back those scan lines down to the point 0.1, my, my engraved time goes down to a minute 22. So it chopped a considerable amount off. So scan lines is a balancing act between making sure you have enough coverage to remove all the material you want to remove, but not having them so, uh, so close together that you're creating a darker burn or, or actually wasting time on the engraving that you don't need to. Um, okay, so a speed, power, line interval, and as you change the line interval, your lines per inch change. Some people will actually work in lines per inch. Uh, so just, you know, both of those are tied together. Scan angle is going to change your angle. So you can do this, for example, and your X and Y will actually scan it on a diagonal. Uh, this will typically slid on your machine. Your Y axis is going to be a whole lot more uh, weight to sling around. So usually scan angles pretty much left at zero. Uh, number of passes if you want to do multiple passes and cross hatching if you want to go side to side and up and down. Uh, to really fill in your, your shapes. Um, so anyway, so the, basics, the basic uh, fill option is going to look like this. And, um, you know, it's going to just do a simple color inside the lines. So let's run this and we'll, uh, we'll be right back. So now we're going to get into one that's often misunderstood, and that is offset fill. Offset fill has a very specific use case and should not be used um, for anything but uh, 
a case similar to this. So I'm going to move, let's prepare the file here. I'm going to move this back to my engraving layer. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this in just one millimeter. And then actually I'm going to offset it again. I, I could have done in and out, but I'm going to do this one by one million. Okay. So what I actually want to do is I want to take this here and I'm going to move it to another layer and I'm going to set this layer to offset fill. So what offset fill does, it's, it's similar to fill in that your speed and your power settings are going to drive, um, you know, how dark or how deep the engraving is, but your speed is going to be lower. You're going to want your speed lower because you're not accelerating and decelerating going back and forth. You're tracing it like you were tracing a vector. So if you see this little spiral here, what it's going to do is it's going to actually fill in that outer or that, that circle or the, the outline that I've got here. And it's going to go round and round and adjust a step in each time until it finishes filling it out. So you see it just keeps going around and around and around until it fills it out. So rather than scanning back and forth left and right over and over, um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I change this back to a fill and I look at back and forth, so see all this red? All this red is rapid travel uh, traversal movements where it's not doing anything. It's not burning, it's not being productive. So what's happening is to get from this left side over here to this right side over here, it does this little burn and then it travels all the way across and then it does this little burn again. Um, that takes a lot of time. So if you look at my total estimated time, it's three minutes, 23 seconds. If I change that back to offset fill, offset fill, notice my time drops down to a minute 34 because, and, and all that red goes away. It's no longer going back and forth, back and forth to fill those in. It's tracing the outline over and over. Um, until it completely fills in the gaps. Now, offset fill is very intensive. It's processor intensive to calculate and it's intensive on the machine to perform. And because it's basically doing the equivalent of a vector, um, your machine can only move so fast accurately without maybe missing steps or skipping belts or anything like that. So you've got to keep your speed in check. Um, so your speed and power settings are going to be very similar to what you would have for a line uh, etching or a line engraving. Um, so in this case, I'm going to do this with, uh, what do I want to do? What is my line? My line's 150 at 60. So I'm actually going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do 150 at 60. Uh, over scanning, we don't need line interval, same as fill. If I move my line interval, it's going to change this, you know, each, each consecutive scan, it's going to move it either further apart or closer together. Uh, I'll leave it where it is and, uh, move this back to the cut layer. Okay. So now what should happen is it's going to, going to run my, I want to move that up. So it's going to run my engraving or my etching of the lines. It's going to run my, I'm sorry, it's going to run my fill of the eyes, nose, and mouth. It's going to run my etching of the lines. It's going to run my offset fill, which is going to be this border. And then it's going to run my cut. So let's go ahead and, uh, and run this. So finally, we have image mode. Image mode is only going to show up if you import a raster image. So a bitmap, a JPEG, GIF, PNG, TIFF, etc. When you import an image like that, uh, the uh, Lightburn will lock you into a mode called image. So image is very much like a fill. 
So just like Phil, you've got your speed and your power settings, uh, which are going to control, you know, how fast and how deep the burn, you know, and, and how much power. So you're going to control how dark or light the burn is. Um, you know, the same bidirectional, the same uh, over scanning and line interval. Um, but where it starts to drift is when you get into image mode. So image mode provides a, uh, a handful of uh, dithering algorithms that can make or break your engraving. And as you click through some of these, you'll see that on the bottom, it actually kind of tells you and gives you a sample. And it says, you know, in this case, I chose dithered, uh, you know, this particular diffusion dithering, good choice for smooth shaded or photo images. Uh, the most popular ones are by far Stucky and Jarvis. Uh, Stucky claims that it's you know, high quality dithering, slightly faster than Jarvis. Um, Jarvis just says it's a good all around, uh, usually best choice for smooth shaded photos. And then you get into things like um, halftone and newsprint, which are going to give you the heavy uh, duotone halftone dots um, or newsprint dots similar to like you'd see in, uh, in print form. Um, some funky ones like sketch, uh, grayscale is one that I do not recommend using. Most lasers don't do well with grayscale. Uh, and then, you know, you can also do a pass through. So if you've prepared your image in an external website, like ImageR, uh, you know, you can come in here and th choose pass through and it'll burn it just like you import it. So for this one, I'm actually going to choose Stucky. Um, you know, there's a whole lot more we can get into with image modes and image engraving, but that's really much more detailed than this video is intended to be. And we can talk about that in a later video. Um, for now, just know that I'm gonna choose uh, Stucky. I'm gonna go 300 uh, speed and 50% power. Uh, and I just, that's from, you know, t doing some testing earlier on. And uh, we'll go with that, bi-directional 2.5% overscan. So that should be good. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust the image. So I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to say adjust image. And I really want to bump up the contrast quite a bit. So I'm going to go up, let's say somewhere about there and I'm going to increase the brightness and then I'm going to decrease gamma. So yeah, let's go. You know what? Let's, kind of bring the contrast back. So I'm playing with this to get a good high contrast image that when I engrave it, um, there'll be plenty of shading happening at some of these transitions. Uh, if it's too dark, uh, because we're burning on an imperfect medium like wood in this case, uh, it's not going to translate really well. So I do really want to make sure that my, uh, my, uh, my contrast is up there, my brightness, uh, and pulling down that gamma. Okay, let's go with that. I think that looks about right. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. And then I've also got a line around the outside, so I'm going to cut out the square when I'm done. So it'll do, it'll do the image engraving. It'll do the image engraving. Come on. And then it'll come through and do the cutout. All right, let's go ahead and send that one. So in short, mastering these layer modes is essential to effectively operate your laser. So your laser manufacturer may provide you a baseline settings to help you get started, but they should be treated as baselines. Um, conducting your own material tests and creating a material library of your best settings for each of the most often used materials that you have will ensure uh, consistent high quality results every time. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tips and tricks on laser cutting and engraving. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.